it's Jahara. Welcome back to my channel to be with you, Reader. So, <clears throat> I am going to be talking about my June wrap up gay. So, it's only the second day of July, so, um, and I finished most of the books I wanted to read, I think, um, in June, and, um, but the books I wanted to read were a bit thicker, several of them were, so, like, I don't think one of my books is under 300 pages that I read in June. Yeah, this one's over 400. This one is over 400. Crook Kingdom, I think, is under 400, too. 500, yeah. Um, this one is over 400. <laughs> and these two, this one's over 500. This one's over, um, uh, 700. So, yeah, uh, I didn't read a book under 400 pages, uh, this month. So, um, uh, I'd say I did pretty well, considering I read thick books this month. But yeah, so, I did some rereads. I was trying to do this whole pride thing where I read books that had, um, LGBTQIA plus characters. Um, and so that's pretty much what I read, but, uh, except for, uh, one. But, um, but that was a buddy read. But, the rereads, I mean, so I read, re so I read Hocus Pocus and the All-New Sequel. Um, I really enjoy this book, that's why I'm so upset about this new movie sequel coming out, because it's not following the sequel book, and I love the sequel book so much, even more than the original movie, and it's just so good, and I love it. But basically... It's 25 years later, and the reason why I love it even more is because the stakes are higher than ever. I mean, I'm trying not to spoil anything, so I won't tell you how the stakes are higher. Just know that they are, like, a lot, a lot higher than they were for Max and Allison and Danny. But anyways, it's 25 years later. It's Max and with we're with Max and Allison's daughters, a poppy who I think is 17, maybe 16. Um, and, um... It's about her, her best friend Travis, her crush Isabella, and her friend of me, Katie, who is also the daughter of Jay, I think his name was. Um, the blonde guy that was a bully to Max in the movie. Um, so yeah. And um, they, you know, decide... <coughs> <coughs> they decide to bring back the witches. Smart move. The thing is, despite the fact that Max and Allison and Danny warned Poppy about what happened, she still didn't believe. I guess seeing is believing, though. But like I said, probably a million times. Not on this channel, but, like, to people in real life. I've said a million times that the non-believers are gonna get the rest of us killed. Hocus Pocus is a prime example, and a sequel. Because Max didn't believe, so he tested it. And look what happened. Bobby didn't believe, and she tested it, and look what happened. There's also, um, the movie Ouija is a horror movie, and it all started because this one girl didn't actually believe it, believe in the Ouija board, so she decided to break one of the, uh, rules, and Ouija boards aren't actually that harm harmful if you follow the rules, but she broke one of the rules by playing alone. There's other examples, but I can't think of them right now. But... The non-believers are going to get the rest of us killed, okay? I swear. If you don't believe, fine. But don't test that not believing. I and mean, what happened to the rest of us who do believe? We didn't do anything, and we're the ones that's going to end up surviving. Um, because we know things. So, I don't care if you don't believe, just don't test it. Like, don't be a moron. Um. But yeah. So, I really enjoyed rereading this, and uh, Poppy and Isabella's relationship is so cute. I also love Poppy and Travis's friendship. Um, like I said, you guys probably know I'm really big on friendships, but yeah. Um, but it's good. I definitely highly recommend. Um, I also reread Six of Pearls and Kirk of Kingdom because there's LGBTQ characters. So, Jisper and Nina are both bisexual. Um, and, um, 
then there's uh, Wylan, who I think is gay, because I don't think he mentions anything about girls at all. Like, both Jasper and Wylan have said that they flirt with both girls and guys. Like, that's their way of saying they're bisexual. Uh, Wylan, I'm pretty sure is just into guys. Uh, being mean Jasper, of course, because they are my favorite picture of our ship, Jasper and Wylan. I'm obsessed. I know a lot of people love Kinej, and I do too. They're my second favorite. But, Wesper is superior. And they're very underrated, if you ask me. I love J Jesper and Wylan. <clears throat> but, um, and I also, this has become one of my favorite series. It's like, it's up there with, um, not the entire Grishaverse. I do love the Grishaverse as a whole, but Six of Crows, I absolutely adore. And I have put it, it's just about up there with Harry Potter and Seekers, as you guys know, are my two all-time favorite series. Is. So, that should tell you something right there. If, like, Harry Potter and Seekers are tied, and Six of Crows will be right under them. Um, but I, I, I mean, I just read this for the first time back in October. Not October. November. And, um, I, and that was my first time reading them, and I'm already rereading them. So, yeah, that should tell you how much I love them. And, um, I enjoy rereading them, and, um, I just, I really enjoy this duology, and it's so good. I also uh, rewatched the Shadow and Bone uh, series, Netflix series, because I have only watched that show once, and my mom wanted to see it, because uh, I showed it the first episode a while ago, and she decided to finally watch the entire thing, and I watched it with her. Um, and uh, she likes it. I don't think she, she doesn't plan on reading the books, though. She's not the biggest reader. And even though she likes fantasy, it's mostly true crime she's into. So that's what she cares about reading and stuff. But yeah. Um, but I absolutely love the series. And, and I so I reread it. Um, I also reread Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. Uh, it was the last book for my buddy read with Buggy Reads and um, Cheryl. Um... And I'm sad that this buddy read is over. <laughs> so are they. We were all talking about it. It's like, we've had so much fun. I mean, this buddy read has been going on for months. It's probably been going on for the majority of this year. Like, seriously. Because we did one book per month, and there's seven books. Um, so, we didn't buddy read the first two, I don't think. We buddy read the third to seventh. Because I had already started the... Uh, I read the first one back in October. Then I read, reread Chamber of Secrets. Well, I started it, and then I they both of them said they wanted to reread it, and I was like, I'll wait for you guys to reread the first two, and then we can just buddy read the third one and go on from there. And they're like, Yeah, sure, why not? So yeah, that's how that all started. But we've had so much fun with this buddy read. <clears throat> um, I haven't done many buddy reads. I mean, um, until recently, uh, my first buddy read was actually with. Jessica from Lady Loves That Reads, when we buddy read Six of Crows. Um, <clears throat> that was our first time, that was my first time ever buddy reading, and um, I uh, just had so much fun buddy reading Six of Crows with Jessica and buddy reading Harry Potter with uh, Hannah and Cheryl. It's just been so amazing. And fun and us talking about Harry Potter non-stop whenever we came to a certain part we would rant or whatever what we like what we disliked and we just talk about it because it's been a long time since any of us have read Harry Potter which is a cry if you ask me uh, <clears throat> so uh, we just had so much fun buddy reading this and we're all sad that the buddy read is over but um, and we all plan on but we all plan on watching the movies at some point because now that we finished the books I don't know when I'm going to read a watch the movies though, but I plan for it to be this month. Um, <clears throat> and then um, I read Rise of Kiyoshi. So, um, Kiyoshi is uh, bisexual, and Rangi, her girlfriend, who she ends up who ends up becoming her girlfriend sometime in this book, is, I'm pretty sure a lesbian. I might be wrong, but I just don't remember her ever showing any interest in guys. Um, 
unlike Hiyoshi, like she had she was had a crush on who we everyone thought was the avatar at the very beginning and to, and then she got really close to um <clears throat> Rangi and fell in love with her. But yeah, uh, I plan on reading the sequel this month. Um but this was actually really good. Um I rated it four stars. Uh and the author is also coming out with a book, I think this month, about Yang Chen. And I think it's also going to be a duology. So, that will be exciting. But I'm very excited to um, read the sequel, especially with how this book ended. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I love Avatar Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, obviously. And this author is obviously trying to show us a, uh, what happened with a bunch of the past avatars. And Yang Chen is one of the avatars we know hardly anything about. I mean, the avatars that have been mentioned in Avatar and Korra, besides Avatar, and Korra, besides Aang and Korra, obviously, are um, Kyoshi, um, Roku, um, Kuruk, which was the avatar before Kyoshi, Yang Chen, um, and Wan, which was the very first avatar, which we learned on Korra. Um, <clears throat> but Yang Chen, we know very little about. She was the airbending avatar before A. Like, not right before A, but in the cycle, she was the last airbender avatar before A. Um, and we know very little about her. I, uh, I think the avatars we know most about, but, uh, we know a lot about Wan, just because there was, like, whole two-part episodes showing what happened with Wan and how avatars became a thing. Um, but we, we know a great, great deal about Kyoshi, and, um... Uh, Roku, uh, from Avatar, because uh, those were the two Avatars before A. Um, but the Avatar before her, Karu, we're gonna, I think we're getting a little bit into that because of the very, because what happened at the very end, I think she finally hit the, got into the Avatar state for the first time, and she saw Karu. But, um, uh, I, I don't think we, I, we know more about him than we do Yang Chan, but we don't know as much about him as we do Kyoshi and Roku. With uh, Karuk, I think the all we really know is that he messed up a lot in his day, and like he he lost his love because the whole the episode of the Avatar Last Airbender where Aang fa faced that uh, thing that steals your face if you show any kind of fear, and it showed that girl that was Karuk's lost love, um, and he died a lot younger than most Avatars die. He was pretty young. Because avatars can live to be, like, in their 100s. Um, but not Karuk. He died before he hit 100. I don't remember how old he was, though. But, yeah, he messed up a lot in his days. As the avatar. So, he's, so it left Kyoshi to basically fix what Karuk messed up. Um, but yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. it um, and, um... I wouldn't say I absolutely loved it as a new favorite or anything, but I did like what I uh, read, and it was in enjoyable, so I'm very happy about that. And um, the last book I read, Rule of Wolves. Um, it's the last book in the Grisha verse, and I finally read it. Um, I, it didn't take me so long because I wasn't enjoying it, it's just I kept... I was just trying to read so much at once that this book kept getting pushed back by accident, and I didn't mean for that to happen, but I finally finished it. I got so, I, I got really into it, and it's like, um, I ended up finishing it in like a couple days, because I ended up just getting so into it, and it ended up being really good, and I got, and I just loved it, and there are so many twists, so many things I didn't see coming, but, um, you know, as we know, is bisexual, and then there's Kane, her new love interest, with Matthias being dead, um, who I'm pretty sure is a lesbian. Um, I don't know, she might be bisexual too. But, um, it was just really good, you know, there's the, it, uh, I just, uh, but they do leave it off for a potential another book. And, um, and I'm pretty sure it has to do with the crows. Um, because they mentioned that they needed to get word to Kaz Brecker at the end. Because um, you do get to see some of the crows in here. Um, kind of like how you saw some of these characters. Nikolai, Zoya, Jinya. 
I think that's it. And Crooked Kingdom, you guys see some of the crows here. You guys see Kaz. You guys see all of them, actually, because Nina's the main character. Then you guys see Kaz, Jesper, Wylan, and Inej. Um, but, um, it was so good. I rated it five stars. Like, it was, oh my gosh, I fell in love with this book. It was just so good. Everything they did, and so much was going on. It was so chaotic. So many things I did not see coming happened. And it's like, twist after twist. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, what? But I seriously enjoyed this book. As you can tell, I tapped it quite a bit. Um, honestly, after Six of Crows and Crook Kingdom, this is probably my favorite Risha Verse book. Um, definitely. Like, it was just so good. And, um, oh, there's uh, also, uh, I forgot to mention, Nadia and um, uh, Tamar are lesbians as well. I was just telling you, like, every LGBTQ character. But anyways, um, but, but this one thing made me cry so much. I don't want to tell you, but it is a character death. My favorite character, not my favorite Grishaverse character, it's my favorite Shadow and Bone character. This character is the only character I put high up there with the crows. Like, the crows are my favorite characters in the Grishaverse, and this character is the only character I put up there with the crows. Because I love this character, and they killed this character, and now I'm sad. And I'm not okay. Um, but so much has happened, and it. It was just insane and wild, but I loved every second of it, and I devoured this book. Like, it was just so good. Uh, so, five-star read. I definitely recommend The Grishaverse if you have not read it yet, because um, so good. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I read uh, this month. Um... So please like and subscribe and comment how your uh, June reading month went. I would love to know and I'll talk to you guys later.